What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the show and today it is a very miserably rainy cold day here in Austin But I have something fun to keep me warm that Harley lowrider ST right behind there Harley Davidson actually sent this thing out so that I could make some content with it for a little while But today we're not talking about cruisers. In fact, we're talking about maybe the exact opposite adventure motorcycles <laughs> The Honda Transalp and Suzuki V-Strom DE800 were released, and I gotta be honest, guys, I'm not a fan of either of these bikes. I think that they both missed the mark, but for different reasons, and we're gonna talk about it today on that Harley Davidson right there. When I did a when I did a sport bike video or naked bike video, I was on an adventure bike, and now I'm doing adventure bikes on cruisers. Things are all messed up here today, but let's hit the road and let's talk about why the Honda and the Suzuki kind of missed the mark. Alrighty folks, two points of order before we get started today. First and foremost, uh, normally I like to do these videos out on a nice twisty road, but unfortunately today we're out here in uh, LA Fitness's back lot because I need to get this motorcycle home before that rain cloud starts dumping freezing cold rain on top of me. It is currently like 40 to 50 degrees outside and uh, it is chilly, chilly, chilly. And I don't wanna get caught out in the rain, especially on a big cruiser on a twisty road. Not that this bike can't handle it, but uh, I just don't wanna get caught out in the rain. Second of all, this video is brought to you by the fine folks over at Quadlock. We're going to talk a little bit more about them later in the show, but let's get started with the little exhaust clip on the old Harley, huh? Yeah, I'm super pumped to have this. I'm super pumped to have this thing for a little while. <laughs> when you twist the throttle, The whole engine shifts the frame. This thing is awesome. It's such a freaking beefcake of an engine in here. 117 cubes of freedom, baby. Let's roll. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we won't be doing a whole bunch of uh, nice twisty roads, but we are going to be out on a motorcycle, and that's kind of what's important. So let's dive in today with the facts on our Honda Transalp 750. So, this Transalp uh, has been rumored and has been talked about for a long time. And, uh, you know, I kind of understand the hype. We haven't had a Transalp in the States since the 90s, I believe. Maybe even 1990. Might It's been a hot minute since the Transalp has been available in America. So a lot of people are super excited to see the nameplate come back and uh, see some of that same old Transalp styling. And I get it, you know, there's that sort of retro kick going on in the motorcycling industry right now. People are super pumped to get their uh, old school fix with new school technology. Totally get it. I mean, here I am riding around on a very old school styled motorcycle with some new school technology in it and uh i'm i'm having a grand old time on this harley by the way there is going to be a full review on this coming but let's get some specifications on the transalp shall we so the transalp has the 755 cc parallel twin from the hornet 750 which is going to be making about 91 horsepower maybe 92 horsepower and uh, 55 ish foot pounds of torque i'll have all of the correct numbers on screen um that's a good amount of power that is a healthy street bike amount of power it's a little bit more than what you're going to see in the de and in the jixus 8 so you know definitely honda is looking to close the gap between the CB500X and the uh, Africa Twin. Whether or not they succeeded, we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Uh, the bike is going to weigh in roughly around 458, 459 pounds, right about 460, which is base KLR numbers. And uh, it's a little heavier than the Tenere. 
Um, it's it's a bigger motorcycle than the other adventure bikes in the space, which, sure, okay, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's not so big that it's becoming unwieldy, and it's not so small that it's, or it's not so underpowered that the weight is going to slow it down. So, would I like to have seen it be closer to 400 than 500? Yeah, obviously, but... I don't think the weight's the problem. Where I do find the problem is the suspension. So, this is going to feature Showa non-adjustable forks with almost eight inches of travel and almost eight inches of travel with Showa uh, uh, shocks in the back, single shock uh, in the back. Having non-adjustable suspension on an adventure bike sucks. Ask me how I know. The fact that I can't tune the KLR suspension to my liking is a huge bummer. Yes, I have rebound, but, you know, rebound and preload, that's not enough. The, both of the forks and the shock on the Honda, they've got preloads, so you're good there, but I wanted to see more out of it. Other specs on this bike, we've got technology with a uh, TFT dash, we've got different rider modes, we've got all sorts of nice adjustability in how those modes are uh, delivered, like you can go in and adjust the traction control and the ABS and you can disable rear wheel ABS. That's a huge deal, by the way. Disabling rear wheel ABS is a huge deal. So I'm glad to see that. And we have uh, 2118 inch spoked rims another nice thing to see over the CB500X, which had 19 cast wheels. Bit of, oh, getting on my way. I want to do a little bit of woo. <laughs> you, can't, you can't give me 117 cubes and not expect me to go wide open throttle. <laughs> <laughs> the the amount of power that this thing makes is lovely. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. So, the only thing that we don't really know about the Transalp is the price, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you that it's going to land somewhere north of 10 grand. It's probably going to be like 11.5 would be my guess because the uh Africa Twin is like 14 for the base and 17 for the Adventure Sport and the CP500X is like 7200 bucks so I imagine if they're trying to split the difference they're going to split the difference price wise and then that would be right around like 10 grand add another thousand for the Honda tax 11 grand that's uh that's usually what I think the bike is going to cost for the base model we do have five different versions of this motorcycle too and we're going to talk all about that after a word from our sponsor for today's video, Quadlock. This video is sponsored by Quadlock. I've used a whole bunch of different phone mounts in my time, including duct taping stuff to my handlebars, but recently Quadlock approached me and said I don't have to live that life. Now obviously I'm joking, but Quadlock does have the sleekest phone mount out there whether you're on a bike, a scooter, a bicycle, or in your car. Their case is made out of an impact resistant plastic and won't have your phone feeling like a giant brick in your pocket, and you can pop it quickly onto their handlebar mount. That'll hold your phone snug as a bug in a rug no matter how fast you're going, and they even have a weather resistant poncho so you can case while you case. Again, I joke, but the day I got my Quadlock stuff it was pouring rain out and I tried to film a vlog, but my go GoPro shut down because of the rain. My phone, on the other hand, it was totally fine. They've got a plethora of accessories from vibration dampeners so you can protect your phone's camera while you ride, fast chargers for your car, wireless charging mounts, and so much more. Click that link down below and check out all their products. A big thanks to Quadlock for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you for supporting the brands that support the channel. Now let's get back to it. Okie dokie pokies, so those are the facts on ye olde Transalp. Now let's get into Spite's Pizza Cutter Emporium, all edge, no point. Uh, this bike sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this bike is a huge letdown for me and it makes me kind of sad because we still don't have that contender against the Tenere 700 and I was really hoping as I think a lot of people were, 
that this Honda was going to be that contender. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Honda's super interested in that. But why? Why do I think that? Well, first of all, just take a quick look at the motorcycle. And we have the 21 inch front end, we've got the 18 rear. Those are good for adventure bikes, absolutely. But you also have that low slung exhaust, man. You've got that low slung exhaust right under there. And the base model does not come with a skid plate. Why? Why are you selling an adventure bike that has an underslung exhaust and no skid plate in the base model? Doesn't even make sense. It's not even like a plastic skid plate like on the KLR. There just is no skid plate. That's a huge bummer and it's a huge letdown. Also, the suspension, it's, yeah, it's going to work for most people, but if you really want to actually dial in anything, you need to get a whole other set of shocks. You need to get a whole other set of forks. You got to, you got to spend more money on this thing to make it work. Um, it's a big, big bummer that if you're really looking for, you know, that middleweight adventure motorcycle from Honda, you really, you got to keep looking. My read on the whole situation with this motorcycle is that what they've done is they've made another CB500X. They've just made one that's a little bit faster. And that's not just me saying that. I was in, uh, I was in uh, Las Vegas this last week with the guys from Ride Adventure and I was talking with Tyler and his read on the Trans Alp is very similar that yeah if you if you want a slightly faster CBR 500X or CB 500X go get the Trans Alp but if you want an adventure bike it's not really going to work. Now let's talk a little bit about those uh, different models. They've got five different models which I'm not, I'm not gonna even pretend like I know what's on every single one of them, but there is no like King Dick model that has everything. You know, you can't, you can't go get the Trans Alp Premium, uh, you know, HRC edition or whatever. And it comes with all the panniers, it comes with the fog lights, it comes with everything. Doesn't look like that's available, at least not from what I saw. Uh, why? <laughs> Why? Why Why can't you just get the full Zoot version? Oh, because it would be about the same price as an Africa Twin, and then you would just get the Africa Twin instead? I, I mean, I'm looking at this motorcycle, 91 horsepower, and non-adjustable forks, and all of this other stuff, and I'm like, you should just get the Africa Twin anyway. That's the bike that you want. So, just, just go get the Africa Twin. And yeah, you don't need to get the full Adventure Sport because the Adventure Sport's gigantic. Oh my God, it's so big. But the regular one, it's, you know, it's a little bit bigger than a Tenere. Um, and it's still got that 100 horsepower. So I would just get the base model Africa Twin over the Transalp 750. Now, let's talk about the Suzuki and see how it did relative to the Transalp because everybody's looking at the Transalp like it instantly made the Suzuki dead on arrival. And I totally see where people are coming from there. Uh, the Suzuki is using the same 776cc parallel twin as the Jixxus. So it's got uh, like 82 horsepower and 55 foot-pounds of torque. The only problem with this motorcycle is it weighs in north of 500 pounds, 507 pounds wet and ready to ride is rough bubbles. I'm not going to lie. However, it does have fully adjustable suspension. So yeah, it's heavy, but let me tell you something, guys. If you are riding an adventure bike, like most folks that I've seen ride adventure motorcycles, you're gonna be fine on the DE. I honestly think that if you're looking at the Trans Alp and you're like, oh, it's so much lighter, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, of course, it's absolutely lighter. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that 507 pounds off-road is easy to manage. It's not. 
but neither is 450 pounds. So I would actually steer you towards the DE. It's going to be cheaper. It's going to have more features. Yeah, it doesn't have it doesn't seem like it's got the quick shifter that the Honda does, but I don't really care. It's just a it's just a better package, I think. And so I guess we're really going to have to wait and see what the DE is going to cost relative to the uh, relative to the Trans Alp, but I can almost guarantee you that the Trans Alp is going to be like 11, 11.5 11 and the uh, Suzuki will probably be like maybe a, maybe 10 grand something like that maybe maybe it's a little bit cheaper maybe it's a little bit more expensive but I don't think Suzuki is going to make that pricing mistake on this bike God, holy cow is the torque on this bike awesome Jesus Christ <laughs> God, it's so fast. <laughs> oh, man alive. This 117 cubic inches does not play. This is fun. This is real fun. Just sending 600 pounds worth of Harley Davidson going down the road like that. Oh, that is that is too much fun. Okay, all right. So before I sit here and wax poetic about how much fun I'm having on the Harley Davidson, let's finish this video out by analyzing where these bikes fit in the marketplace, right? Because much like the Suzuki. Uh, GSX 8S going into a very, very thick market uh, segment with a ton of competition. Both the Transalp and the DE are going into very, very heavy competition with the adventure segment. The middleweight adventure segment is so full of options. So let's talk about those options relative to these motorcycles. Let's start out with the obvious thing, uh, the Tenere 700. Neither of these motorcycles has anything for the Tenere. I'm sorry. I, like many people, was really looking forward to the uh, potential crowning of a new big four king of the adventure bikes. But unfortunately, the Tenere goes to live on another year as the king of the crop. Uh, the KLR. Nope. <laughs> the KLR is still a donkey. It's not going to beat either of these motorcycles. I'm not trading my KLR in for either of them, but, uh, you know, I, I just like how stupid it is, and I like how cheap it is. Neither of these bikes are going to be nearly as cheap as the KLR, so I can forgive a lot of the KLR's faults because it is just a nice, cheap motorcycle. Uh, leaving the big four and going over to Europe. Uh, nothing from the Aprilia here. The, the you, you can't you can't beat the Aprilia with either of these bikes. The Aprilia has more features. Um, it's nice and light. It's got the fully adjustable suspension. It doesn't have the power that the Honda does. But honestly, the torque is so nice out of the Tuareg. And once you get the uh, once you get the traction control dialed out. It does great off-road. I had a lot of fun with it. And I don't see either of these bikes going toe-to-toe -to -toe with that one. Uh, maybe, maybe you get something from the uh, Tiger 850. But that one is more sport touring bias. The 900 is more premium. So I don't see those bikes having anything for that one. There's slightly different market segments. Um... The KTM, it really doesn't seem like anybody is at all interested in going after that KTM crown. Uh, I think the Tuareg is probably the closest, but it's not nearly as hard-nosed. So, 
If you want something that is hard-nosed, you go for the 10 array and it doesn't have the crazy features and it's cheaper. But honestly, I see both of these motorcycles, the Transalp and the DE, as coming in over budget, under value, and both of them, in my opinion, both of them are disappointing and sort of dead on arrival. But those are just my thoughts, and I am interested to hear what you guys have to say about these bikes, because I know there is so much hype behind the Transalp. Let me know what you think about both of these. And while I have been tough on them today, I've really kind of torn them apart because I've spent so much time on adventure bikes lately. Um, they are going to be great options for that sort of 80-20 ADV rider. The kind of guy or gal who is gonna do mostly street riding with it. They want a nice, comfortable motorcycle to ride on the street that they can go put on a gravel road. Both of these bikes are gonna be great for that. And while they are going to be a little bit expensive from the Honda and maybe the DR is, or DE is a little bit heavy, you know, a lot of people don't come to adventure bikes because they wanna get the absolute perfectly spec machine. That's why I have a KLR650 for God's sake. So again, let me know your thoughts down below. A huge shout out to Quadlock. All of the information about Quadlock's products and stuff are in the description down below. And uh, I'm hoping that they wanna stay around for more because uh, I have been using my Quadlock on the KLR and uh, I've actually really been enjoying it. It's so much easier to use than the other stuff that I have tried in the past. Um, and I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, the ton of people ride with quadlock gear, so uh, it's not like I've suddenly discovered this new magic bullet for motorcycling. No, they're, they're a great product, and I do stand behind them. All the information down in the description below. And uh, I'm going to get inside before this rain gets any worse, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.